Welcome, Daniel Weekly 32 OX20 hexadecimal, right? May 13, 2015. Going well. I did post, uh, I did finally get my um, the user poll, the curl user poll 2015 online last week, after last week's video, I think. And it went up and it went everywhere so apparently i did something right or someone helped me or however it worked but there was a massive response to the to the poll already in the first 24 hours so i'm grateful that's awesome a lot of people have contributed and said uh, i mean put their opinions and thoughts forward and and fill it in and submit it so that's going to be interesting to see so within the first 24 hours, we got over 1000 responses and we got almost 200 last year. I mean, during the entire 10 day period, we had it up. So I'm going to have it up uh, in 10 days this uh, this time too. So it'll be, uh, if you see this, you should go there and fill in, submit your, your feedback. And it'll be up until uh, the 16th, I said. That's Saturday, right? Uh, yeah. So it'll be up for a couple of more days and then I'm going to spend some time to analyze the results standalone as, as in um, just the results for this and then I'm going to compare how they differ uh, from the last year's responses. I did add a couple of questions this year so it's not, not all questions are comparable but uh, maybe we could spot some kind of trend. I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting. And there's going to be some interesting results and feedback and I'm going to see and try to figure out how to I mean use the results from this in to kind of create some kind of plan or actions to to make sure we'll be even better next year when we ask the same questions again so uh, let me say I'm going to uh, explain a couple of command line options this week as well. I'm going to take three options that are kind of related to each other, but I'm going to start with describing a little bit about my work on HTTP2 multiplexing that is going on pretty fiercely actually these days. So I've been fighting back and forth. I, pretty early on, I thought I had it working pretty good, but then I added more transfers and I added bigger transfers and it turned out it didn't work at all. So I got uh, damaged data and I got some other mess mix-ups and mess-ups and whatever so it took a little while but now I have uh, tested I tested 1000 parallel streams and it worked fine the other day I've also tried to tell the, to, to make the server uh, really decrease the number of max concurrent streams that it allows and still try to I mean Cram add a lot of streams from from the client side from cross side when it asks for so like you know when it asks for one thousand streams it the server may say that oh I only allow ten at the same time at the most so then curl will have to kind of back off and just once one is completed it needs to add another one and another one and another one and so on and it seems to work pretty good actually uh, but that's for downloading my upcoming work is for uploading. Uh, I'm going to start, uh, I was somewhat started on it and then Tatsuhiro has been working on it somewhat. Tatsuhiro also made a great fix for ng HTTP 2 yesterday to provide us with a better test server for that. So he'll actually, so his test server, the ng HTTP D server now has an echo option that actually makes it send back the same file that I upload, which makes it good for, I, could, I can make curl then upload the file and, and it'll get the same one the same data back like a kind of an echo server but it'll make my tests uh, tool easier I could do upload a thousand files and then just see that I got the same ones back and blah 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 kind of cool uh, right and I, uh, I had some other issues yeah and I, I did make it possible to just now you can actually switch on multiplexing for HTTP 2 and not have pipelining for HTTP 1. So th this, is, this should make that existing applications that are using pipelining for HTTP 1 
well not one, already today when, when they upgrade to the next version of curl they won't suddenly automatically get HTTP2 even if they have that, I mean the pipeline is supported. Uh, no, they won't automatically get HTTP2 multiplexing even if they kind of enable HTTP2. They will have to explicitly say I want to have multiplexing before, before it gets done. And, and when I did that, I've, uh, I kind of made sure that all the tests and everything is still working fine and there's no memory leaks and uh, anything anyway. And then I also added another option for pipelining and multiplexing because I did some fun. When, when, when you do a number of connections at the same time with curl, like if you want to do 10 transfers or you want to do 100 transfers to the same host name and you say, I want to do this pipelined or multiplexed, or both, or either one. Uh, so you create 100 transfers, and curl then is, it sees that yeah, it's the same host name, but if you're adding them at the same time, it, it won't find any connections uh, present to pipeline or multiplex on, so it'll instead create a new connection. And so if you add a lot of those, yeah, the, maybe the last connection, no, the last few transfers might use one of the earliest connections, but in reality, it'll basically open connections, new connections for all of them, since curl then prioritizes to make the transfer now rather than wait. And I added an option now called curl, but what did I call it? Wait pipe, pipe wait. Um, you can see this somewhere here. Yeah, and um, it'll tell curl that if there is a connection to the host that you're going to talk to and the pipelining state is unknown, wait for it until you know. And then after some time when you know if you can pipeline or multiplex, then it'll continue. And if you can't multiplex on that, it'll create a new connection. If you can multiplex on that, it'll use that. So it'll make, basically, if you make a client then that speaks to a certain site and you make a 1000 connections, no, sorry, 1000 transfers or 100 transfers, it'll keep, it'll initiate the connection first and the, and the 99 ones afterward they will wait until the first one has kind of confirmed what it can do or or it has negotiated the protocol level and blah 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 and once it knows oh multiplexing is possible then when the other 99 can multiplex on that same connection it'll make your client much friendlier and and reduce the connections better which perhaps is what you want when you do when you add, you do a client that speaks pipelining or multiplexing not necessarily and this as this changes the behavior somewhat i've added this as an option per transfer and it'll be off by default so it won't wait for a connection by default it'll still act like before as by, by default i know we've discussed this on the mailing list in the past so i think this is a good fix I don't, this was also became possible because I kind of added this unknown state. We didn't have that unknown state before. Previously we had a, a boolean, no pipelining, pipelining. So we didn't really know, uh, we didn't really keep track of the fact that it actually didn't know until a certain point in time when it knows. Now it does. <clears throat> kind of cool. Here's some fun curl command line options to consider for the future. I've continued down the man page a couple of more in the in uh, alphabetical order, but it turns out it's not really alphabetical. I'm, the man page is really in a confused order. So here are the next three. I did three last week and this is three more. First, that's the um, one you very rarely use. It's called dash dash HTTP 1.1. It's exactly that. It tells curl to use HTTP 1.1 protocol version when speaking HTTP. Really, that is the default, so you rarely use this. I would say that maybe you use this if you set it to something else before, or if you have that in a config file and then you want to switch back to this, or, or something like that. Very rare option. But um, the second option that I want to mention is the one I kind of really already talked about the dash dash http2 is it called dash or is it called minus that little symbol i'm saying dash i've had discussions about this before dash 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 http2 
That of course then uh, tells curl to I want to use HTTP2 for this request. So it'll then if you do an HTTP URL, it'll do the upgrade dance in, in plain text um, HTTP2. And if you use an HTTPS URL, it'll do the TLS extension way to upgrade um, to upgrade to HTTP2. And I'm say I'm saying TLS extensions because it'll use one or two different extensions for uh, switching to HTTP2. And those extensions are ALPN. That is the official way to do HTTP2 for TLS. ALPN. But there was another one that was used for Speedy. And since Speedy was around a long time before HTTP2, a lot of the early servers and still a lot of servers support this other extension called NPN. So you can usually you can negotiate HTTP2 with NPN2. And curl uh, uses both um, as far as as long as the underlying TLS library support them, it'll use them. So if you use dash dash HTTP2, you will get an HTTP2 connection or HTTP2 transfer is if the server supports it. Cool. There should be no harm in using that pretty pretty often, but if you're doing it in um, in plain text, I mean in HTTP, HTTP colon slash slash URLs, you'll get an upgrade header in in the requests, and also if it actually does the upgrade, it'll be it'll be some extra round trip. So it'll, it, it, there is a slight performance um, pen, uh, penalty then that you may don't want. So actually, in the future, we might want to have a, a I want to do HTTP2 on TLS only because that we could actually add by default one of these days. Well, anyway, that's a kind of a feature for uh, for the future for me to work on. I'm already considering adding such an option. Um, and then the, the third option, the third command line option I wanted to mention then very related then to the HTTP2 option is the dash dash no dash NPN. Is actually called dash dash npn but you wouldn't ever use npn just like that because you that would enable npn but you, when you're doing uh, hp2 for example to an uh, HTTPS server you can actually tell curl to not do this with npn that that's the old tls extension used for speedy before and uh, as i just mentioned so you can actually tell curl that no in this connection i don't want you to use npn so i use dash dash no dash npn Fairly unusual option to use, I would say. And you, I, I would guess that you use that for debugging or testing or when everything else fails, you can you can try that. But should be I, that should be a rare beast. Never used that. I don't think I've ever used it myself, even. And then I think I'm prob probably one of those who have used curl the most for HTTP two servers, perhaps, or perhaps not. Um, I wanted to mention that the HTTP2, those were the command line options, we're done for this week. HTTP2 is becoming RFC 7540 and HPAC is becoming RFC 7541. HPAC, of course, being a, a mandatory part of HTTP2, so they, they're not really separable, but you, those are the two RFC numbers that have been allocated for it. We could see that in the uh, IESG's uh, notes that were updated this week. Is there going to be any HTTP2 enabled curl in any big distro soon? I'm hoping that the Debian version would build HTTP2 enabled soon since curl uses ng HTTP2 and uh, an updated TLS library and all of those are part of Debian at least in unstable these days so I'm hoping for, for the HTTP2 enabled curl in Debian. Go go! The, I posted that I did a talk last Wednesday, right, a week ago, about HTTP2 for the TCPIP Geeks Stockholm meetup. A pretty good talk. I couldn't really keep within my time slot as usual. I'm talking too much. I got a lot of good, good questions, and I think it was in general a good, um, a good meetup and good questions and a good conversation and everything. I didn't record it. I didn't video it. I, I posted my slides online and that was good 
of course, then I got some complaints that I didn't post any recording. But anyway, it was also then uh, appeared on Hacker News uh, uh, um, by someone. And then my blog post about it got a lot of views. Fun. I appreciate uh, all the good comments on that. On my multiplexing work in general. Uh, yeah, I already basically said that. Um, I reported about that. Um, I'm going to continue doing um, I'm going to I'm right now working on my upload tool to do like any uh, set uh, optional number of simultaneous uploads and I'm going to make sure that they are uploaded and they're echoed back by the server and written down to the files uh, properly so that all all the uploaded files get uploaded properly and sent back properly and stored and wow that should work and it should work kind of uh, fast enough too. I'm not going to measure exactly, but I don't want to have any notable weights anywhere. I'm going to track the logging and everything. And every, of course, you can find all my test tools and all the all the source code on, on the GitHub repo too. That is, I'm, I'm posting all this. I'm committing and pushing all these uh, commits fairly often, so you can keep track of this. And if you're interested in actually trying out multiplexing HTTP2 for real, so Please go ahead. The downloading of multiplexing should work now, so you should be able to get it, try it, work, work it out, and see how it actually performs for your your fun use cases. And do tell me. Um, early feedback is really good, and I need help with the testing. I haven't worked much on, on adding these tests for HTTP2 yet. I'm going to do that soon too. I just want to make sure that the basics are working, so I'm going to work on the uploading part now. But once the uploading works and I have the downloading working, I'm going to uh, proceed and, and, and work on uh, some tests and some other stuff around it. That's it for this week. And this is going to be a short week for me because we have national holidays here in Sweden this week as well. As we have this kind of spring tradition in Sweden. We don't work on, in springs. We just have national holidays. Uh, and uh, that's about it. Have a great week and I'll be back. Bye.